Mario St. Francis here in Washington, D.C. at the March for Life. I'm here with Father Frank Pavone, and I'd like him to introduce himself to you all because so many of us have not heard of his wonderful apostolate. Thank you. My friends, I uh, direct the Priests for Life ministry, a worldwide ministry that aims to fully activate the church at every level for the purpose of bringing an end to abortion. We are called Priests for Life, of course, because priests play a key role in doing this, but the priest is ordained for the people. So Priests for Life serves everyone in the church. You are all a part of our Priests for Life family when you connect with us. And the idea is very simple. God has given to the church all the grace, all the spiritual tools we need to bring an end to child killing. And if we fully utilize those tools, we will see the victory because the church has a divine guarantee. So what do we do? We do seminars, training of clergy and laity, television and radio programs, internet communications, and uh, above all, we teach pro-life as a spirituality. Some people think the pro-life effort is just a movement or a cause or a political ideology. It involves all of those things, of course. But it is an aspect of our discipleship. If we are followers of the Lord Jesus, if we are believers in God, this, the, the very act of loving and following and obeying God involves necessarily a love for our fellow human beings, and not just some of them, but all of them. And so that includes the unborn child. So we teach the spirituality of pro-life. The spirituality doesn't only tell us why we have to be pro-life, it tells us how. And so we train people in how to pray about abortion, how to conduct our activities, and what virtues are needed in conducting those activities to bring an end to the killing of children. Uh, this is some of what we do for the church throughout the world. The pro-life movement right now is at a time of, of tremendous strength and also tremendous challenge. We're actually making more progress than even a lot of people in the movement realize because we're under a, a, a dominion of uh, secular biased media who, uh, who don't get the truth out about our movement, which is why, of course, we're so grateful uh, to all that you're doing in this, in this television effort. But we have in the pro-life movement more progress than ever before because the truth is getting out, especially because of social media. Uh, the truth is getting out about what the abortion procedure is, and that is a big aspect of our educational efforts, and about what the abortion procedure does. You'll notice, for example, that at this March for Life, more than ever, there are the women and the men who have been through abortion and now regret it, and they speak out publicly about it. That's a big area of growth for our movement, because now the movement is speaking not just from a principle or an idea, but from experience. So the movement at this point is more important than ever with the various political obstacles that we face, that we let the voice of experience speak. That is why at the march we will have a rally. As the, as the march reaches the Supreme Court, we will have a rally at which men and women who have lost children to abortion will share their testimonies one after another. This is called Silent No More. And when you go to silentnomore.com, you will see those testimonies. And they are tools for you to use to spread the word. This is where the movement is at at this time. Experience is, is, is proving us right. And experience is proving the other side wrong because all the false promises they made decades ago about how abortion would solve all kinds of personal and societal problems, uh, uh, all of those promises have proven to be empty. None of that stuff has happened that they promised was good. Instead, all kinds of new problems have arisen. It's always up to the movement to expose this truth, to expose the, the, the damage that abortion does. And we need to be courageous in doing that because when we do it, as I was just telling a group of young people at our youth rally, we become the, 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 the bad guy, we become the enemy uh, because we spoke the truth about abortion. It's important for the movement at this time to say, look, it doesn't matter what people think about us. What matters is what they think about abortion because that's how abortion will end when they see how damaging, how destructive it is. If we have to get labeled in a negative way in the process, so be it. It's a small price to pay to save the lives of our unborn brothers and sisters. I want to refer you to two simple websites, and I've already mentioned the silentnomore.com. That, of course, is a very practical activity we need to do, spread the voices of experience and testimony. Let me give you two others. One, of course, is prayercampaign.org, to pray. 
And, and we all know we have to pray, and we all know we do pray for an end to abortion. But here's what we've done at prayercampaign.org. To take the different times and seasons of the year and to apply those themes to the cause of life. So, for example, during the, during the Christmas season, during the Easter season, during Lent, very specific prayers tying in the, the themes of Lent, for instance, to the theme of pro-life. And so it is throughout the course of the year, special events that arise in the pro-life movement. If we can have a worldwide focused prayer effort, whenever these special needs arise, that goes a long way, not only because of the inherent power of prayer, but because of the educational value of using these prayers. And then finally, a simple website re very recently developed called ExposeAbortion.com. As I was saying earlier, we have to take the, the evil of abortion and expose it. In exposing it, we go a long way to ending it because a lot of violence continues simply because it's hidden. It's not because people agree with it. It's because it's hidden. When we bring it out into the open and enough people see it that they say this has to end, then it ends. Then people take the steps necessary to end it. So ExposeAbortion.com is a simple website where we're putting one quote a day. The quotes might be from an abortionist, from a medical textbook, from a court case, from a women, woman who's had an abortion. ExposeAbortion.com, one quote a day that we can take to help awaken the mind, heart, and conscience of a family member, a friend, a co-worker, maybe a pastor. Take the quotes from there. You'll find a very powerful tool to use to help in your personal pro-life efforts. Let us be confident my brothers and sisters, those of us who are especially commissioned by the church to do the work of the gospel, whether as ordained uh, ministers of the gospel or as religious, be confident in the power of your word and of your witness. What we find in our work with priests all around the world is not that they are uncertain where they stand about abortion. Oh, they know full well, we all know where the church stands on this. Where we run into the problem is that so often we lack confidence. We're afraid we're not going to be persuasive. We're afraid people are going to rebel against us. We're afraid of hurting people. Put your fears aside. This ministry of Priests for Life is a ministry of encouragement. We want to encourage you. We want to encourage each other and say, listen, preach the word boldly, clearly, and compassionately. When you preach it, people respond. That's how I got involved in this work full time. It's not that I had this idea ahead of time. It's that as I was preaching about abortion clearly and compassionately, people started coming to me and saying, thank you, we need more of this, we want more of this. I saw such a great response in my parish that I said, well, what if all the parishes were doing this more clearly, more consistently, more boldly? Final thought. Dr. Bernard Nathanson, one of the founders of the abortion movement in America, said that he and his colleagues would have never gotten away with what they did. Never. If we, the priests, had been more united and purposeful and strong. So my brother priests, my beloved religious seminarians, deacons, religious brothers and sisters, we can do it. The Lord has given the church the grace. Let us speak and teach and counsel with confidence, not shying away from what's controversial, because the Lord will be speaking through you and you will see the beautiful fruits of minds and hearts changed and lives saved right before your eyes. Thank you so much for connecting with us at priestsforlife.org.